the Tasmanian tiger, officially declared extinct in 1936, might still be among us. Eyewitnesses claim to have spotted the creature in dense forests, and it's not just ordinary people. Experienced rangers and scientists also say they've seen it. Could this legendary creature have survived, and we simply didn't notice? In this video, we'll dive into the latest sightings, explore ongoing investigations, and ask ourselves, is the thylacine really extinct, or does it still walk among us? The story of the Tasmanian tiger is a fascinating one, still gripping us to this day. This apex predator once roamed across Australia, Tasmania, and even parts of Papua New Guinea. But about 2,000 years ago, the thylacine became confined to Tasmania. Why? Likely due to competition with dingoes, which made survival difficult for the thylacine on the Australian mainland. When European settlers arrived in Tasmania in the 19th century, everything changed for this animal. The settlers viewed the thylacine as a threat to their livestock. They painted it as a ruthless sheep killer, even though feral dogs and poor land management were often to blame. But the thylacine's reputation as a nuisance stuck, and the government introduced bounties to exterminate them. A reward was offered for each adult thylacine killed, and even the juveniles had a price on their heads. As a result, between 1830 and 1920, around 3,500 thylacines were hunted down. The last known thylacine, Benjamin, died in the Hobart Zoo in 1936. Here is a sad irony. After Benjamin's death, the zoo owners still hoped to find a replacement. It took some time for the world to realize that with Benjamin, the last of his kind had vanished. But is that truly the end of the story? Doubts arose almost immediately after Benjamin's death. People continued reporting sightings of the thylacine in the wild, and these reports persist to this day. It's a fascinating thought. What if this mysterious creature, officially declared extinct, is still out there somewhere, hiding in the wilderness? The Thylacine Awareness Group of Australia has documented more than 3,500 sightings on the mainland, and about 1,200 in Tasmania. They systematically gather reports from those who claim to have seen the thylacine. And these accounts don't just come from adventurous tourists. Often, they come from seasoned rangers and locals who know the land and its creatures like the back of their hand. Many of these reports come from remote, hard-to-reach areas. Take southwestern Tasmania, for instance, an area so isolated that it feels like time has stood still there. Dense forests, rugged terrain perfect for a creature that wants to remain hidden from curious eyes. Perhaps the thylacine is waiting there, just out of sight, for us to find it again. Some sightings have caused quite a stir. For example, in 1982, the experienced ranger H. Nodding reported seeing a thylacine up close in northwest Tasmania. His account is considered one of the most credible, as he was highly familiar with the wildlife. Then there's the Doyle footage from 1973 which shows an animal crossing a road in South Australia. Many believe it could be a thylacine, although the video is blurry and brief. Still, the thought that it was there keeps the debate alive. And now, things get even more intriguing. In 2023 and 2024, reports of Tasmanian tiger sightings continue to emerge. Michael Moss, a dedicated thylacine hunter, is convinced that the creature has survived on the Australian mainland. He even encourages people to keep their eyes peeled, claiming that clues to the thylacine's existence are still out there. He is not alone. A study conducted in 2023 analyzed 1,237 sightings and concluded that the thylacine might have survived until the 1990s. Remote regions like southwestern Tasmania could be potential hideouts where the thylacine remains hidden from human observation. A particularly fascinating incident occurred this year. A boy named Zach and his father encountered what they believed to be a living specimen of the Tasmanian tiger on a remote road. They stopped to help with what they thought was an injured animal, only to find something that could be the discovery of the century. Not a dog, but according to them, a living thylacine, a creature officially declared extinct in 1936. But that's not all. They captured photographs, and these photos, well, they look strikingly real so real that even experts might struggle to dismiss them at first glance. However, as with many stories of this kind, there are some peculiarities. Zach wishes to remain anonymous, 
and certain details, like the exact location, are a bit hazy. Yet, the photos are so compelling that they are hard to ignore. What if the sighting is genuine? Could it be that the elusive creature we believe to be long gone is still roaming the wilds of Tasmania? Maybe, just maybe, that's exactly what Zack and his father stumbled upon that fateful night. Let's take a step back to 2023, deep in Australia's Kakadu National Park. A visitor spots what he believes is none other than the legendary Tasmanian tiger. Yes, that's right. There we are again, with a fresh sighting, and a couple of blurry photos to boot. Classic, right? But the mystery thickens. The images are vague, as you'd expect, but they raise even more curiosity. In 2023, another sighting stirred up the excitement, this time in Tasmania itself. A local resident claimed to have spotted a thylacine near the remote southwest coast, a region known for its dense forests and rugged landscapes. The witness described the animal's distinct stripes and stiff tail, which matched descriptions of the thylacine almost perfectly. While no concrete evidence was provided, the story gained traction in local media, sparking debates once again about the possible survival of the species. And this isn't the first time. In 2021, a Tasmanian man named Neil Waters made headlines when he released photos he believed showed a thylacine family. Though experts later debunked the claim, Waters remained adamant that he had captured evidence of the elusive creature. These modern reports remind us that even today, people are still searching for the Tasmanian tiger. Recently, three previously unknown photos of a dead Tasmanian tiger were discovered in an Australian archive. These images show the animal in various positions, one lying on a table, and another close-up reveals its leg raised to expose its pouch. Experts date the photos to around 1912, likely taken at the Melbourne Zoo, where several thylacines died that year. This discovery alone is fascinating, but it raises an even more exciting question. Could the thylacine have survived longer than previously thought? In the 1990s, eyewitness reports in the Adamsfield region began to increase. The most famous case is that of Rusty Moly, a local who claimed to have seen several thylacines and even made casts of their footprints. He wasn't the only one. Other independent reports emerged, including from hunters who allegedly shot one of the animals by accident. And here's where it gets truly intriguing. There are indications that the thylacine may have survived into the late 1990s or even the early 2000s. Photographs of footprints and reports of dead animals with distinct thylacine characteristics support this theory. Scientists are also getting involved. Barry Brook and his team have analyzed over 1,200 sightings since 1910, attempting to understand the geographic patterns of the thylacine's disappearance. So, what did they find? Some places, particularly in southwestern Tasmania, remain nearly untouched. These areas might be perfect hiding spots for a small population that has managed to evade human detection. So why don't we have concrete evidence if there are so many reports? The answer is simple. Tasmania is a tough landscape. The island is covered in dense forests, steep mountains, and remote regions that are hard to access. Finding a shy, well-camouflaged animal like the thylacine in such a place is a monumental challenge. Yet, the hope endures. New reports and sightings keep surfacing, fueling imaginations, and keeping the interest in this remarkable animal alive. But it's not just sightings that give us hope for the Tasmanian tiger's survival. Researchers at the TIGRR lab have already sequenced the entire thylacine genome. They now have the full genetic blueprint of the animal, essentially the recipe for creating a Tasmanian tiger. But this is only the beginning. The next step is to use that information to bring back a living, breathing thylacine. Here's where stem cells come into play. Scientists are working with stem cells from the fat-tailed Dunnart, a close relative of the thylacine. These cells are being genetically altered to carry thylacine DNA. The goal is to create a functional embryo that can be implanted into a surrogate mother, like a Tasmanian devil, where the new thylacine could grow. Why marsupials? The answer lies in their unique reproductive biology. Marsupials, like the Tasmanian devil or kangaroo, give birth to very tiny, underdeveloped babies that continue growing in the mother's pouch. This gives scientists a special opportunity. 
they can place a thylacine embryo into the pouch of another marsupial, and the embryo could develop there. It's a unique advantage that only marsupials offer. Critics rightly ask whether it's morally justifiable to invest vast resources and time into reviving an extinct animal, when countless endangered species urgently need our help right now. Species that are alive today are on the brink of extinction, and many believe money would be better spent protecting them. Why pour funds into bringing back the thylacine, when the same money could save living, breathing species? Another key argument from the skeptics is whether the thylacine could even survive in today's world. Since its extinction, the environment has changed. Tasmania's forests are no longer the untouched wilderness they once were. Humans have introduced new threats. Foxes, feral dogs, and diseases. The modern Tasmanian landscape might not be a suitable place for an animal adapted to a different time and ecosystem. Can we really expect a resurrected thylacine to thrive in this new, harsher reality? Supporters, however, see things differently. For them, the return of the thylacine is not just a fascinating scientific achievement, but also a step to restoring a fragile ecological balance. The thylacine was the only large predator in Tasmania. Its disappearance may have left a void in the local ecosystem, a void that might still be felt today. Bringing the thylacine back could help stabilize the balance between predators and prey. Moreover, the technology developed for the thylacine's resurrection could also be used for other species. It's not just about the Tasmanian tiger, it's about the potential to prevent other species from going extinct. The thylacine project could then become more than just a scientific curiosity. It could be a trailblazer for 21st century conservation. But this research is still in its early stages. One of the biggest challenges is developing the reproductive techniques needed to manipulate the embryo so that it carries thylacine DNA and grows properly. It's a highly delicate process, and even a small mistake could derail the entire project. And here we stand, at the intersection of the past and the future, with one foot in Tasmania's ancient forests and the other in cutting-edge laboratories. The thylacine is a creature that captivates and warns us. Its disappearance shows how quickly we can lose what's around us. But its possible return, that could teach us what we might regain if we're willing to delve deep into the tricks of science. But perhaps the real reason isn't just about whether we'll see the thylacine again. Perhaps the true treasure is our understanding of nature, our responsibility to the species still with us, and the realization that in nature, nothing is ever truly final, neither life nor loss. And who knows, maybe, somewhere out there in the dark forests of Tasmania, a thylacine is still wondering, curious about whether we humans will one day grow wiser. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel.